God's love. Elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. Thank you for being with us today. Again, I'm talking about this glorious life. Somewhat hesitating to use that word glorious, but if we know what it means, it kind of fits us right where we are at. It means a life that is characterized by God's goodness, God's kindness, God's compassion. Would you like to live that kind of a life? Even if you fall and make a mistake, you're wrapped up in God's goodness and kindness. And um, the Bible talks a lot about this. Now, the opposite of a glorious life or of God's glory shining upon us is to live in darkness. Now, sometimes I hear people say, oh, it's so dark out there. But really what the Bible tells us is that the darkness that exists in the world is a darkness that is in people's minds. It says in Ephesians there, having their understanding darkened dark in understanding, uh, being alienated, not having the life of God. So ignorance darkens people's minds. Pe people don't know who God is. People don't know what God has done. People have a stereotypical and erroneous view of who God is, and it can be very damaging. Now, it, it says about Jesus, one of the prophecies about Jesus was that he would come as a light. And that the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Well, who were those people who sat in darkness? When you read that prophecy, you find out that they were the people living in certain among the Jewish tribes, Zebulun and Naphtali, which is where Galilee is. Galilee. So the people of Galilee that Jesus came to 2,000 years ago, they were in darkness. What kind of darkness? Religious darkness. Religious darkness. They went to the synagogue every day, but their minds were darkened about who God is. Jesus had to light up their life. He had to light up their mind. So Jesus came as a light in a dark world. He says, you don't know God. You think you know God, but you, you, you don't know God. He says, look at me and I'll show you who God is. And so a couple of more verses before we go to the teaching. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. You don't have to keep living in darkness. Another one, it says here, if we walk in darkness, we don't know where we're going. Many people don't know where they're going. So sad. They wonder, why, why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Well, why am I on the earth? Well, you know, where am I going? They don't know. But Jesus has come to be a light. And that's what I'm teaching about here. We, so when we get into the teaching now, I'm going to talk about where can we see God's light? Where, where do we see God's light shining so that your life can be lit up by his love? So let's get to that teaching, and then I'll come back and share more with you. Here we go. You know, there are at least four places in the Bible where we see God's light, God's glory, God's kindness. One, it says in Psalms, it says that... Uh, the heavens and the firmament and space and all of nature is filled with the glory of God. We see that God is awesome. You know, I love what science is doing to help us in this. You know, we are learning that the universe is ever expanding. It's getting bigger. Wow. Getting, and then we study what we call nanotechnology. Well, you study the smallest of anything, you know. Remember when they discovered, you don't remember this, but they discovered the molecule and the atom. They said, oh, that's so small. Atom is so small. Do you know that by now there are at least 150 subparticles that are smaller than an atom that science has discovered? And they say as soon as they discover something, well, this is smaller, this is smaller than the smaller than the smaller than the smaller, then they, they, they couldn't be anything smaller. Then they discover one more subparticle even smaller. So it seems the bigger you go, the universe is expanding. The smaller you go, there's more there than you ever thought possible. And you know what the Bible says? All of creation tells us that there's a great God. Every, every quantum particle, everything in quantum physics tells us that everything, He created all things, that all things are upheld by His power. And the universe is shouting, you are loved, you are protected. There's a power greater than you holding you up. 
I always feel like, I almost feel like saying, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world. Come on. He's got the whole world. But to really make sense of that, we got to sing the second verse as well. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world. Oh, some Christians are so gloomy and sad, I want to kick them somewhere. They said, oh, it's dark. It's beautiful out there. I love it. The lakes and the oceans and the mountains tell me that my God is awesome. There's no darkness. Is that the darkness? Eyebrow to the hairline. So if you lost all your hair, you have a greater area of darkness. There's a second place of God's glory in the Bible, and this is all from 2 Corinthians 4. It says that the glory of God is seen in the face of Jesus. In the face of Jesus. Interesting expression. You know, our face is symbolic of all of us. When you take a passport photo, you don't say, oh, I don't want to take a picture of my face. I want to take a picture of my kneecap. Can I put that on my passport because it is my unique kneecap? They say, no, no, we, we want your face. They say, well, can I put the back of my head? I kind of like the way my hair looks in the back. No, no, they want to see your face. So because your face represents all of you. So where do we see God's light? Where do we see illumination? In Jesus. That's why I love the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts, all the epistles reveal, oh, what a God we have. Jesus said, look at me and you'll see who God is. I said, wow, what a God. I see God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ and all those smoke screens of religion, all those veils. You know, they talk about a veil. The Bible doesn't use the word smoke screen. It calls it a veil. You know, you can't see because of the veil. Well, Jesus broke through all those veils of religious darkness. He, he, he just took away all the, that smoke screen and he conquered, he conquered religion and all its requirements and defeated us and gave us a tremendous message called the gospel. And again from 2 Corinthians 4, it says, God's glory is in the, in the face of Jesus and it's in the gospel. The gospel is glorious. And it says if if people, some people, it says, they're, they're, they're blinded. Their understanding is blinded. So they don't see the glorious light of the gospel. The gospel is what I've been talking about today, that you don't get what you deserve. You get what Jesus has provided for you. You don't get good because you did good, but even if you did bad and you come to God, you get the good that God has provided for you. That's why it's called the good news. And then it says... Again, 2 Corinthians 4, it says there's another place where the light is, where this glory is, this glory, this light has shone in our hearts. Do you know you have God's glory inside of you? You know, Moses, it says at one time, just one time for a short season, maybe a few minutes or a couple of hours, his face was reflecting God's glory, but it went away. You know, when we see the moon, The moon isn't really shining. It's just reflecting the glory of the sun. And this is the truth. God says, I have commanded my light to shine in you. If you have received Jesus Christ, I tell you, you have God's light in you. Let it shine. Let it shine. Shake off those chains of religion and let the light shine. Some people have been been so-called church members for 50 years, haven't got it yet. You know, we talk, well, I want to enter the presence of God. No, you're not going to enter the presence of God. That's not the gospel. That's some other religion that you made up yourself. Probably got it from Texas or someplace. I don't know where you get your, you, that you're going to enter God's presence. No, we don't enter God's presence. Don't think so highly of yourself that you're going to enter God's presence. No, the gospel is much more glorious. It is that God's presence entered you. He entered you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But our mind can get so dark and we don't see it. We say, oh, I want to enter the presence of the Lord. Seven steps. You poor darkened thing. 
You poor, darkened, charismatic, so-called spirit-filled believer trying to enter God's presence. You poor thing. You need to get saved. You need to get the gospel. You need to have your eyes open and say that Jesus' presence has come into me. He lives in me. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I said to encounter Jesus is to encounter God's glory, the light of God. So what is, what is it we have seen? What, what is it that our, our understanding that was darkened? But I, I say my understanding has been illuminated by Jesus. In what way? Well, first of all, I got rid of that corrupt God that I had that didn't even exist in the first place. You know that corrupt God who is like a mafia boss? that can be paid off, a little hush money under the table. You know that God who is paid off if you just worship enough and if you pray enough and if you fast a little bit and if you give enough in the offering? You know that God who's paid off to bless you if you do all that stuff? I don't have that God anymore, thank God, because that God never existed. He was just a God that religion had put in my brain. But I've discovered who God really is. I've discovered Jesus Christ. Did Jesus ever say to people, well, before I heal you now, have you been lifting your hands in worship for half an hour? Come on, you little leper, raise your hand first because I ain't going to do nothing for you until you do that. No, 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 no. Did you find that in Jesus? No. I thank God that that corrupt God who could be bribed and paid off, that if we all did just the right thing, he would do something big and mighty. That God never existed. You know who the God who, who is the true God? He is steadfast in love. He has shown his grace to you. He never turned his back on you. We may turn his back on God so we couldn't see God. We couldn't see God. Our sins were there hindering us from seeing God. But God never turned his face away from us. So that's one thing. And then another thing, this notion of separation. You know, religion specializes in separation. Everything about religion is separation. You separate, many religions, men from women. And then you have the priest from the regular folks. We call it clergy and the laity. And then you have the ministry gifts and the regular believers. And then you have God separated from people. And we're always trying to bridge that gap of separation. This is, this is the underpinning of all religion that God is separate from us. But we're trying to get to him. We're trying to get his attention. We're trying to move God. We're trying to, here I am wherever you are up there. You know, this is not the gospel. My, my, can't we read what the Bible says? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and all things were made by Him. I said all things were made by Him. You are created by God, and in Him is all the fullness. And one day everything will be put under Jesus' feet, and Jesus will be all and in all. And He conquered death, He conquered evil, He triumphed, and He rose again as the Savior of the world. He never turned His back on you. Thank God I could get rid of that notion. And neither male nor female, nor the, neither Jew nor Greek. Well, doesn't God love one group more than the other? No, 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 no. God is perfect, steadfast love. You can't be any more than that. <laughs> so you can't love more, a little bit here, a little, a little No, no, no. I, I'm glad for the light. I'm glad that I discovered that my God is not some pagan God that needs to be paid off. And when I understood that, I understood how Jesus is really my substitute. It wasn't that Jesus became my substitute, shedding his blood to pacify his angry father. Come up there, sir. Can't wait to get my hands on the throat of Youngren and you. But okay, if Jesus pays his blood, I guess I'll accept that as payment. Otherwise, I'm just ready to annihilate the whole bunch of them. That's a pagan idea. That's what all the pagan religions believe, that you have to pacify an angry God. And he said, I discover that Jesus is not a substitute like that. I got rid of that dark and gloomy idea. And I say, well, of course not. 
He is our substitute, but in a whole other way. He went into the ring, the boxing ring, so to speak. He went into the ring up against evil, up against shame, every guilt that ever attaches itself to a human being, every shame that has ever attached itself to you. He went up against death itself, and he won an everlasting victory, and he won the victory so good that he went right into hell, and he conquered principalities and powers and defeated them and showed us one once and for all, evil will not win, but God's love wins. There is victory in Jesus, and because he lives, we shall live also. He did for me what I can never do for myself. Oh, this is so, so important. You see, that mafioso God, that, that God who is always looking for you to pay up, uh, you, you know, if he's going to bless you, if he's going to help you, if he's going to heal you, if you're going to get your prayers answered, you need to, to pay up in, in, in a sufficient amount of worship or in a sufficient amount of sincerity of prayer. That God doesn't exist. So stop believing in that God. That, that God is just a figment of religious imagination that keep people under. The God we worship is just like Jesus. Did Jesus ever say to somebody, well, I'll heal you, but you know, uh, I, I need to make sure, I need to make sure that you really want to repent of all your sins first. Is that what Jesus said when the lame man came down through the roof? Did he say, I, I'm, I'm not going to do anything for you unless I really see you grovel? No, 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 no. He just immediately carte blanche announced your sins are forgiven your sins are forgiven. And then he healed the man. Free. We, we, we don't even know what the man wanted. We don't know whether he was sincere or the measure of his sincerity or whether he had any kind of virtue in him that would make him stand out. I would say the, by the record, no, no, not at all. He just received freely. See, that mafioso God, small g, because he's not the real God, Get rid of that out of your mindset and just lift your hand where you are at home and say, thank you, God, that you're so good. You're way better than I ever thought. And then if you want us to pray with you, if you want us to believe with you, call the Grace Prayer and Partner Center, and one of the prayer ministers will be happy to pray with you. But we're praying on the basis of this good God who is for you, who is not looking for payment. And, and then, of course, if, if you say, I need to receive Christ, because after all, the way I'm kicking religion in the shin on this program, you may say, well, I see God in a whole new light. I see who God is. I want this God. Well, call as well, and I'll send you this booklet free, Salvation, God's Gift to You. Right now, let's get back to the teaching. So now let's practically live this glorious life. Ephesians 5, 8, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Do you still feel ashamed? Do you still feel unworthy? Do you still put yourself down? Oh God, I haven't been what I should have been. Well, put that away and walk in the light that you are accepted by God. Romans 13, 12, cast off the work of darkness. Put on the armor of light. Cast away that. Whether it's gossip or adultery or religious darkness, cast it off and walk in the light of Jesus. Proverbs 4.18, the path of the just is like the shining sun. It shines brighter and brighter into the perfect day. We go from glory to glory. Is your life getting better? More fellowship, more increase, more prosperity, more ability to handle stuff. How about your emotional abilities to handle all kinds of setbacks? How about your academic abilities? How about financial abilities? How about social challenges? Are we going from glory to glory to glory? Paul said in Acts 26, open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light. That's all we want. We want to open people's eyes. And we're going to win. We're going to succeed. Numbers 14, 21 says, and truly as I live, the Lord says, the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. I believe that. I believe that heaven is going to be full of people. That's why we are thinking about Muslim friends, Buddhist friends. I'm, I'm learning now. You know, I'm getting older. I, still have, I just had a birthday, but I'm still learning. I determined I want to know more. How can I effectively communicate with Buddhists? I've already done it. I've read, been in many Buddhist countries. And, and you know, we've had wonderful times there. 
And we've seen God touch Buddhist people, but I want to learn more. I never want to stop. I, because the, the, the whole earth is going to be covered with the glory of the Lord. So we're going to win this. We're going to win this. We're going to win this. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And I saw a crowd that no man can number. And I don't see that this morning. I see hundreds of people. It's nice. I could count you all, but it wouldn't take me many minutes to count you all. But the Bible says there's a crowd that no man can number. Let's get to the point where we can't even number the people. There's so many people here. We, we, the ushers say, stop making us count how many were in church because we lost count. One more verse. James 1. Don't be deceived, my beloved brethren. And then there would be sisters too. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes from the Father of lights with whom there's no variation or shadow of turning. He says, don't be deceived. That means, and he's talking to believers. He says, brothers, sisters, don't be deceived. To be deceived means to walk in darkness. You've received the light. Walk in it. Don't be deceived. Number one, know that every good gift and every perfect gift is from God. Don't ever lose sight of that. If something is good and perfect, it's from God. God is a good God. Don't lose sight of that. And then, number two, don't lose, lose sight of this, that God is the Father of lights. Everything that is bright, powerful, illuminates you, it's from God. God. And then he says, and number three, forget this idea that God goes up and down like a yo-yo. Forget this idea of variation and variableness. And, sh- you know, you know, and he uses the illustration of a sundial, which is how they you know, knew what time of day it was in ancient times. So the sun would rise and there would be a shadow cast. And people would say, well, it's about 8.30 in the morning and then about 10.30. And then the sun would stand right above their heads. And they said, now it's noon. It's zenith. And then it would go down. And he says, now, don't be deceived. God's not like that. God is not like the rising and the setting sun. God is perpetually in zenith. Oh, that's good news. That means God has never been better at blessing you than he is right now. God has never been better in healing, saving, delivering, prospering you than God is right now. He is at the zenith. He is at the high noon of his ability. Don't be deceived. You know, a lot of people have this fluctuating God. This God who's kind of, you don't know, depends how he wakes up in the morning. They forgot that he doesn't wake up. But, but you know, he, he's going to be in, and if we don't pray like this, and, you know, I see all this panic. Our beloved Christian friends down in the States, they're in an election right now, and I read all the prophecies. And if, if God's people just don't pray right, if they don't pray exactly, get the right numbers to pray right, it's going to be, it's going to hell, the whole thing. What a fluctuating God. He's sitting there counting. Eh, we got 1,357,295 praying. I, I need to get higher than that. I ain't going to move and do nothing unless we get to 2 million. What kind of view of God is that? Thank God I've been delivered from this idea that God kind of goes up and down and he kind of is weighing it. And... Thank God for this marvelous light. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. He didn't come to come down the world. But then he says two verses later, he says, there is a condemnation. Ooh, there is a condemnation. Well, what is it, Jesus? And he says, this is the condemnation. That light has come, but people still love darkness. How sad that is. When you hear the light, oh, I like my old religious darkness where I can take credit for all the blessings because I did so much prayer. It must be the reason why God blessed me because I've been so, I'm better than most of the others in church. They want to keep walking in their darkness. Jesus, I didn't come to condemn you. I'm not putting you down. But there is a self-inflicted condemnation. And that is light has come. <laughs> you see how I deal with people, how I deal with you. And you still want to keep holding on to your dark ways of thinking? You still want to continue evil deeds and cover up 
and kind of explain it all away with religious terminologies and smoke screens. I tell you, I thank God for the light. I hope I'm opening your eyes a little bit. You're accepted by God. Well, in a moment, I want to pray with you because, as I said, God is at the zenith of his ability and willingness to save, to heal, to help you. But first, I want you to watch this because we are perpetually on a campaign to touch the world. And I want to encourage you to join us. Watch this. 59 nations. 300 gospel festivals and counting. 345,000 leaders trained. 16 million new believers have received follow-up. I am not going to lift up one religion above the other. I have only come for one purpose, to lift up Jesus. Jesus revealed to the people of all religions, Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, Shintoists, and Christians see for themselves that Jesus is risen from the dead. This gospel advancement is succeeding in places that many consider impossible. And still it is happening because God makes a way where there is no way. And because partners who have received love from God become generous givers, become a partner today. Call 1-877-974-7223 or give online at peteryoungren.org slash give. You are urgently needed. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Every day is another step of faith. We, we need to trust God to touch your heart. We need, we need for the Lord to, to move on you. We, we need partners. We are so many frontiers, and we are running with this because we believe the gospel is a human right. It is a basic human right for everyone to hear the gospel at least once. So thank you for joining us in this. I want to pray with you. I said Jesus is at the zenith of his ability and willingness to heal, to bless, to save you. Father, I thank you for everyone in this television audience. I thank you, Lord, right now that this is the truth, that there is no shadow of turning with you. There's no variation. You are as great at blessing and healing and touching people today as you were 2,000 years ago. So in the name of Jesus, I encourage you at home to lift your hand and just say, thank you, God, for touching my life. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for answers to prayer. Call the Grace Prayer Center. Let us know what God is doing in your life. We love you. Remember, you are loved by God. Thank you. Your partnership makes this ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the good news of Jesus Christ to thousands who have never heard, call 1-877-974-7223. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at PO Box 2108, Vista, California, 92085-2108 or 190 Railside Road, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, M3A 1A3. Together, let's give everyone a chance to hear the gospel.